February 23rd, 9.34 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? I have more. Frankly, there are still a lot of great... Actually, I really like this company one. These ones haven't died on me yet after, like, a year. And I hope they keep up, because it's hard to find ones that don't break after a year. I think there are still a lot of gray areas. I just wish I remember who I bought. <laughs> it was. Uh, I think I remember. I feel like there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And that is, you're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Ooh, don't do that. No, I don't throw mine angrily. I just toss them lazily onto a cushion. I was try my first trial without the Fae helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. I can do it! I might fail, but I can do it! Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. February 23rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 9. Is it a new judge? Is it the same judge? It's always the same judge. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. It's been two months, but I haven't been in the courtroom since his trial. I, it doesn't let you continue if you don't have your evidence, so... I hope I do. In the courtroom since his trial. I hope that personal feelings will not be part of this proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lonsky has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office, pot office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well, then call your fir wi first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Star, to the stand. The cough-up queen. So she says... Hmm? Haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, caviar! I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. And for you, I have Fiestable. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, your honor, how does it taste? This is what everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts. No, it's always I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name profession now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh huh. What exactly does that mean? Till two years ago, Miss Angelstar was a special investigator with the police. She was a first rate homicide detective. What? Miss Starr was a detective? Oh, huh. I know who you are. Cough up. 
Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. But very well. Y you may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? Pickled tapioca, yep. But I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the persecutor's office is divided into two blocks. My hand is going really numb. It's red from ice. Oh. Get the feeling back. It's hard. It's like it's hard to move it very quickly. Ooh, whoa, that's cold. The parking lot of the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for prosecutor's office personnel. Harley, if you're there, we have another. Oh, good job, you're you're right on it, girl. I, I, I love it. Or Dark Soul, I don't know who, whichever one of you took care of that for me. You're both right on it. I love it. The blue block is for vendors and clients. Uh, that guy who just did the message, uh, one of those bots, I think. Bots or scammers, they try to sell viewers. And it's stupid. Okay, yeah, okay, then. You go, girl. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by the car in the block back of, of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to dr drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, your honor. The parking lot with Edward's car, parking lot, lot for man. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, your honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. Seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Miss Wright, Mr. Wright, uh, I can't agree on, princi on principle, your honor. Oh, my arm. Get the blood back, get the blood back. Seems that some poor losers are will unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Your Honor, you know for once, I would really fucking appreciate it. If you just shut the fuck up. Wait, are they talking about me? Witness account. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to the garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy nip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend, how touching. As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife, which you say saw being stabbed at the Detective Goodman. So how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I, I'm i still thinking about that. It, it's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Well, well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. I need to get the feeling back in my hand. It's really not coming back. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic ab abhorrence to crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The launch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted, given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. Which one? This boyfriend. He's the detective? Not that boyfriend. The security guard. 
Th that boyfriend? You have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Only at least has some self-worth. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. The security guard room is in the... The security guard room is in the lot in a, bl a block. Blah, 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 blah. The security guard room is in the lot in A block. Sometimes I don't think people, when they write shit, like, think how well it flows. Like, did you not read that back and notice that wasn't well, like, that could have been written in a smoother transition? It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from, from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I park in B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. How did she get to A block to apprehend her then? When I sense something, perhaps it was my finally home detective intuition at work. Good night, Doc So. Good night. You sent something, so you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? I felt like, how would you say, oh yes. It was like the feeling you get when you're you, when you view a pumpkin chocked full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Speaking of speak, speak of a detective's intuition, wasn't the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Yes. Well, he was like a young cheese, a young cheese, a pale white cheese not yet tangy with experience on the street. A greenhorn. Hmm. Then I must be hard. Then I must be a hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case, there, in a lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with the which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed it was. Hmm. What an odd case this is. And the person you saw... Are you sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter, crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That... that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cr cry plagiarism. I may be, be regulated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. A photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and, and snap, I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only now seeing this photograph? You think I'd show it to you as a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Crime photo added to the court record. Uh-oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So what was the defendant doing at the time? Goddamn. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Er, him, yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg, I mean a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late, but you had time to snap a picture? No. Yes, the next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Starr's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panic next to me makes me calmer. D don't smile like that! 
Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. Alright, let me look at what we got. Oh, got it. And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with a knife? As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm. I sure that is a fine lunch, but isn't that odd? Look at the photograph. This is the photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. It had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet it was still stronger than you ever f than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Objection! And how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph. Ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit here and take that kind of abuse? Ugh, you got a better idea? Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. But that's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated pre murder. Pre premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hand in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Those gloves do seem to tell a, tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder, a serious offense. Witness, add to this to your testimony. The murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves, like driving gloves? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do a murder. It's the only possible conclusion that one can make. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Ugh. Impressive. I'm sorry they took you off the force, Miss Starr. This is bad. She's got them thinking this was all planned. If she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Bright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? No. no shut up. Let's keep our heads in the bricks. Okay. Heads in All right. No, I'm sorry. Blah, 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 blah. What do you think you got? Objection. 
Ah, you're right. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. Smart. The bloody murder weapon. The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy... The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Uh. Well done, Harley. Well done. Order, order, order. Great, now the tide of turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is a humble pie. What, what? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not uh, over such a trifling detail. But, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah, the prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over here. The defendant, Lotus Guy, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution needs to prove, nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now, but you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? The powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really, now? Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. But it, it only plunged once. Does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. It only stabbed once, I believe. A single stab wound. You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. W what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this. But take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Ah ha. You're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. What about my objection? Not no one noticed? Well, witness, you got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one would, could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw you thought was blood. Testify. Oh, here she goes again. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Miss Star has turned out to be as short-tempered as she looked when we met her. Challenging her abilities as a detective really set her off. The short wick burns are th out the fastest. The short wick burns out the fastest. It's a scientific fact. I wonder, wouldn't it depend on the size of the candle? I mean, add more wax and even a really short wick will burn longer. Obviously, more scientific testing is required. 